Hello everyone. Our topic for today is Module 4, Fundamentals of Curriculum Designing. Fundamentals of Curriculum Designing Buildings on Peters Olivas, 10 Ashums for Curriculum Designers As we begin to discuss about curriculum designing, all teachers need to know the different ashum or turims regarding curriculum. As presented by Gordon W. Taylor R. and Olivia P. in 2019. These assumptions will be used to guide curricularists in designing a curriculum. Assumptions are principles that practitioners as curriculum designer can use as guidelines or a frame of reference. So, before we begin to discuss about the curriculum designer, the teachers is need to know about the different assumes. There are the 10 assumes about curriculum that teachers need as reminders. The first is, curriculum change is inevitable, necessary, and desirable. Earlier, it was stated that one of the characteristics of curriculum is its being dynamic. Because of this, teachers should respond to the change that occur in schools and in their context. Societal development and knowledge revolution come so fast that the needs to address the changing condition requires new curriculum designing. So, educators need to change curriculum from time to time because of the current trends and needs of society. This is appropriate since there is constant change happening in every area of life in the community. The reason is that the upgrade of knowledge and discovery of some areas of knowledge, especially in the field of research, science, and technology. Second, curriculum is a product of its time. A relevant curriculum should respond to changes brought about by current social forces, philosophical position, psychological principles, new knowledge, and educational reforms. This is also called timeliness. So, the school curriculum not only reflect but also a product of its time. It is corollary to the first. So, we have examples of changes in the curriculum over period of time. Like example, the team teaching, the instructional television, open space educational, values clarification, behavioral objectives, computer literacy, Literacy, Cooperative Learning Third is, curriculum changes made earlier can exist concurrently with newer curriculum changes. A revision in a curriculum starts and ends slowly. More often, curriculum is gradually paced in and paced out. Thus, the changes that occur can coexist and often times overlap for a long period of time. So, it means the curriculum changes made at an earlier period of time can exist concurrently with newer curriculum changes at a later period of the time. Curriculum change depends on people who will implement the change. Teacher who will implement the curriculum should be involved in its development, hence should know how to design a curriculum because the teacher are the implementers of the curriculum. It is the best that they should design and own the changes. This will ensure an effective and long-lasting change. So, curriculum change depends on people who will implement the change. So, if you are a teacher, you are involved to the develop. So, if you are a teacher, you need to know how to design a curriculum. 
because if you are a teacher and you know how to design and ha- you know how to change in your own so this is effective and long lasting changes number five curriculum development is a cooperative group activity group decision in some aspect of curriculum development are suggested consultation with stakeholder when possible will add to a sense of ownership even learners should participate in some aspect of curriculum designing any significant change in the curriculum should involve a board broad range of stakeholder to gain their understanding support and input so it means curriculum change is effective as a result of cooperative endeavor in the part of the group so the significant changes in the curriculum should be brought about as a result of the group decision and any changes in the curriculum should involve all the stakeholders the teacher the students the administrator even the non-certified personnel number six curriculum development is a decision making process made from choices of alternatives a curriculum developer or designer must decide what contents to teach philosophy or point of view to support how to provide for multicultural groups what methods or strategies and what type of evaluation to use so, in a number six, decision-making process. So, curriculum development is basically a decision-making process. So, like example, choices among discipline, choices among competing views, choices for emphasis, choices of methods, choices of organization. Number seven, curriculum development is an ongoing process. Continuous monitoring, examination, evaluation, and improvement of curricula are to be considered in the design of the curriculum. As the needs of learners change, as society change, and as new knowledge and technology appear, the curriculum must change. So, in number seven, continuous process. The curriculum change is a never-ending process. So, the stakeholder should always have a room for the improvements. Remember, when dealing with work, nothing is taken personally against you. Number 8. Curriculum development is more effective if it is a comprehensive process rather than a piecemeal. A curriculum design should be based on a careful plan, should clearly establish intended outcomes support resources and needed time available and should equip teaching staff pedagogical so in a curriculum development maybe it should not be a hit or miss proposition but we need to be careful in a planning and be supported by adequate resources and we need the time and sufficient personnel number nine curriculum development is more effective when it follows systematic process a curriculum design is composed of desired outcomes subject matter content complemented with reference set of procedures needed materials and resources and evaluation proce- procedures which can be placed in a matrix so systematic development systematic development is more effective than trial and error so we are the set of procedures should be made systematically by following an established set of procedures it is more effective if we use the systematical process 
In the last one, curriculum development starts from where the curriculum is. Curriculum planners and designers should begin with existing curriculum. An existing design is a good starting point for any teacher who plans enhance and enrich a curriculum. So, in the number 10, starting from existing curriculum. Then, curriculum planners starts from where the curriculum is. Just like the teacher starts where the students are. Elements or components of a curriculum design. There are many labels or names for curriculum design. Some would call it a syllables or a lesson plan. Some would call it a unit plan or a course design. Whatever is the name of the design, the common components for all of them are almost the same. However, some schools, institution, or departments may add other minor parts of or trimmings to the design. Let us talk the lesson plan as a minuscule curriculum. A lesson plan or teaching guide includes Intended Learning Outcomes or ILO or the Desired Learning Outcomes, DLO, formerly labeled as Behavioral Objectives, Subject Matter or Content, Teaching and Learners Methods, and Assessment Evaluation. Each of these components or elements is described below. So, in the curriculum design, there are many names. Like, sometimes they called syllables or lesson plan. Sometimes they called unit plan or course design. But, kahit ano pang tawag nila dito, ito ay magkakaparehas pa rin. So... In other school or institution or department, pwede silang mag-add minor parts or trimming in the design. So now we proceed in the fundamental of curriculum design. The number one is the behavioral objectives or intended learning outcomes. The behavioral objectives, intended learning outcomes or desired learning Outcomes are expressed in action words found in the revised blooms. Taxonomy of objectives. Andersen and Kratwool, 2003, for the development of the cognitive skills. For the affective skills refers to the taxonomy made by Kratwool and for the psychomotor domain by Simpson. So, a behavioral objective is a learning outcome stated in measurable terms which gives direction to the learner's experience and becomes the basis for students' evaluation. While the intended learning outcomes should be expressed from the student's perspective and are measurable, achievable, and assessable. Number two, content or subject matter. The content of the lesson or units is the topic or subject matter that will be covered. The content will embrace the overall perception of a course or curriculum. The theme, the purpose, the rule in the student's learning will be part of the content. The subject matter will be the actual topics and knowledge imparted within the course. So, content, it is all academic circle. Refers to the areas learning and the knowledge within those areas. While the subject matter on the other hand, it is 
more finely described as the actual knowledge and learning to be imparted. Number three, reference. The reference follows the content. It tells where the content or subject matter has been taken. The reference may be a book, a module, or any publication. The reference is the creation, management, and assessments of information resources in order to develop service that meet people's information needed.